I want to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. We all need a break from 2020. I usually start preparing and getting organized for New Year around, well, early December. But I think that this year we all deserve to start thinking about a new year early as well. I'm so over 2020 that I just got a new set of Hobonichi planners, which are an absolute first experience for me, just to get into that motivation and productivity zone. Well, but more about my 2021 planner setup in a few weeks. The thing is, we all make lists of goals for the new year. We pick a planner and pour into it every single thing, big or small, that we want to achieve during the year. And most of the time, none of us actually think about what is being written down, and most of all, about what is driving us to write those things down. There are two types of goals, pull and push goals. But before I continue, you may be asking, what's the point of categorizing goals once again? Well, I think that categorizing your goals according to this system allows you to figure out what is wrong with your goal setting. You see, a lot of people tend to unconsciously pick one of the two. They either set a lot of pull goals or push goals, but never a healthy mix of the two. This is a really easy exercise to do. Just think about previous goals and resolution lists. You usually decide to accomplish things that you feel will make you more perfect, more accomplished or successful. Or are you prone to setting a lot of goals that are driven by a passion about something or a natural motivation to excel in a specific hobby, craft or project? Until a couple of years ago, I was very prone to establishing a lot of goals that I found would be valuable in making me a better professional or more healthy or more knowledgeable or, well, whatever. I was always very unhealthily driven towards perfection, which is <laughs> actually ridiculous. That means that most of my goals were push goals. Goals that were forced, required a lot of hard work and willpower, and usually had an external source. They also made me feel exhausted, and accomplishing some of them was actually a slog. Having an external source doesn't mean they were goals imposed on me by someone else, but they were clearly a manifestation of external influences. For instance, when I thought I wanted to be a lawyer, <laughs> and I worked hard to become one, I wasn't doing it because I personally thought I would like the job. I did it because everyone else in my academic environment was telling me it was the best professional path I could take. That means that I didn't find any type of internal motivation to do what I was doing, I was just manifesting my external discipline that way. And then I apparently grew a brain or something and I found out what I was doing wrong. I had a lot of push goals on my plate and I needed to start incorporating pull goals as well. I mean, everyone is a specific individual. We all have our own personal experiences, thoughts and preferences. There is no way someone's path should be identical to someone else's path or set of goals. What may make sense to achieve for, let's say, individual A, may not make any sense for individual B. So detaching ourselves from that feeling of collective accountability is really important if you want to become your own person. For that, you need to incorporate more pool goals into your list. Pool goals are those which you feel naturally drawn towards. This is a description used in this incredible website called Nest Labs, and I think it's the most accurate description of pool goals that I've read. Pool goals are almost effortless. They require dedication, but that dedication is rooted in your passion for something. That was basically how I got my actual job as a legal advisor. Yes, there was a lot of dedication involved, but I felt so naturally drawn towards working for something that I actually cared about that I never felt at any point that I was forcing myself to work hard. I feel the same whenever I decide to take on a new learning project or a new reading marathon. Those are not push goals, but pull goals. I feel naturally drawn towards completing those goals, as there is absolutely no external source or influence that is pushing me to accomplish them. Okay, so push goals are goals that you set because of necessity, be it in your academic path, health, social relations or something else. And pull goals are those that are tied to your own individual passions and ambitions, and your drive towards something. But now you may ask, are pull goals better than push goals? Well, no. Acting based on your own preferences may be very detrimental, actually. We cannot always get what we want, that's for sure, and our drive is not always the best answer for everything. 
For example, it may feel very natural to you to open an Etsy shop and start selling your art, because you have a natural predisposition for creative work and business. But if you are in a difficult financial situation, maybe going freelance and opening up a small business without a steady job may be too risky. Maybe you really like Japanese as a language and you're just applying to a bunch of jobs that state that learning French or Spanish might be a preferential factor. So maybe in this case it may be a better idea to drop the Japanese, delay it and opt for other languages instead. Pool goals are definitely not better or superior to push goals. An unhealthy amount of pool goals may lead to a highly stressful life and other problems because you may not take into account some necessities that you need to tackle before pursuing your personal ambitions. All in all, there are no final answers here and everything comes down to your own evaluation of the situation and the goals you're thinking about. Now that you know what push goals and pull goals are, just really think about why you're writing a certain item in your resolutions or goal list. Do you really want to do this or do you believe you should do this? How many of your goals are actually push goals and how many of them are pull goals? If the scales are tipped towards one or the other, do you think there's any reason why you're so inclined to act out of necessity or out of your own self-driven ambition? Is there any way you can transform some of those goals into goals of the other category or simply throw them out of the window altogether? Also, don't worry if you actually want to answer these questions and do this exercise because I've created a printable with all of these points that you can download right now. All in all, you want the skills to show a healthy balance of goals driven by necessity and goals driven by your preferences. Some people say that you should transform all push goals into pull goals, but I think that's a completely irrealistic perspective on life, and it's the kind of toxic nonsense that the self-development community likes to throw around. Life will never be perfect and you'll never be able to do only things that you want or like. It's physically and mentally impossible to feel constantly motivated, inspired and productive. Sometimes you'll feel tired and frustrated and that's normal. All you need to do is find your motivation. If you want to find your motivation, I recommend your book called The Motivation Manifesto, which talks about how you can set your goals and find your motivation without falling to your self-oppression and to external influences. You can listen to the whole book with your Audible subscription, as well as other thousands of audiobooks. Despite the social distancing, you can use Audible to learn more, reduce stress and stay entertained. You can download their titles and listen offline anywhere and anytime, which means you can grasp the contents of entire books while you're commuting, cleaning or meal prepping. The app itself is free and can be installed in all devices, so you can browse their huge catalog and purchase individual titles even without a subscription. Also, even if you use multiple devices, you won't lose the page where you are in in your audiobook, because it synchronizes across your computer, smartphone and iPad. With the holiday offer, you can try Audible Plus for $4.95 per month for your first six months. This is the best deal Audible has offered this year. So don't forget to go to audible.com slash Mariana or text Mariana to 500-500 for six months for almost half the price and start writing down the list of titles you want to listen to in 2021 with Audible. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Do not forget that printable and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.